concerns about China's property sector collapsing. Uh, that would have huge consequences for its debt markets and financial system. We know the unemployment rate for young Chinese, 16 and 24 in urban areas, is now over 21%. Uh, that's catastrophic for trying to keep social harmony. You've got the recent removal of the foreign minister, now, of course, the defence minister in recent days. Our PM's due to visit Beijing very soon. Uh, there's talk of a meeting of sorts between President Biden and Xi Jinping in November. We don't know where that meeting might be, but uh, I have to say, are we sending the wrong signal by going to meet with Xi on Chinese soil? Should we perhaps do it at a neutral venue? What do you think, Greg? Well, Peter, that's a very important question. Let, let me just add a final footnote on the defence stuff. The other thing is, Miles has announced now he's not going to reply to the surface fleet review until next year. So that means we'll be two years into the Albanese government before we get a single decision on our Navy surface fleet. And that, that I think, is the government just running up the white flag of surrender on defence policy. On China, look, I think it's reasonable for Albanese to go to China to meet the president. But what should be the dominant international story today is that Xi Jinping has just sacked his foreign minister, just sacked his defence minister, just sacked the two leaders of the... Um, rocket forces, which is his nuclear nuclear force. Uh, he sacked a whole lot of other people at the top of the military establishment. If, the Albane if Albanese had just sacked Richard Miles and Penny Wong, the government would be in crisis. Our na nation would be in convulsions. And you'd think the government was finished. Now, Xi Jinping is also now not going to international summits. He's very unpredictable. He didn't give his speech in South Africa. He didn't show up to India. This is starting to look to me like late era... Mao, late era Brezhnev, mm. uh, late era or autocrat uh, crazy dictator syndrome, uh, whereas the whole point of the Chinese system is stability. Now you're getting this weird instability at the top of the Chinese government. And the truth is no one in Western governments has the faintest idea what's really going on. I think out of all of that, it's perfectly OK for Albanese to go there and talk to him. We want to have a dialogue, but... This sort of happy, clappy nonsense mm. that you get from the uh, the head of the universities in Australia who said, you know, we mustn't demonise China. I mean, give me a break. We've got the second strongest uh, military and economic power in the world. We have no idea whether the defence minister is in jail or on charges or, or still has any influence. And uh, I tell you what, it's not people demonising China. It's a very dangerous instability at the top of Chinese life right now. Hey, just quickly before we go, I was reading comments overnight from Keir Starmer, Labor leader, of course, in the UK, odds-on favourite to be the next Prime Minister. Is he trying to backdoor Brexit? There's a suggestion that he's going to, uh, if elected, make the UK an associate member, whatever that means, of the EU. Uh, it's a bit hard to make a judgment on this because uh, Keir Starmer is a pretty canny guy and his statements have had a marvellous element of ambiguity about them. He wants a closer agreement and there's nothing wrong with that as an aspiration. I mean, the agreement was so nasty and difficult and limited because the European Union wanted to punish Britain for having the temerity to, to vote for Brexit. So as long as he accepts mm. that he's not joining the customs union, he's not joining, he's not rejoining the EU in any way, seeking a closer trade agreement is, is OK. But, I mean, it all remains to be seen. All right, we'll leave it there. Greg Shannon, thank you as always.